G'day, this is Captain Oop, and this is an MG34. This is a German-made machine gun used primarily during the Second World War, it was first developed around the year 1929, and then in 1934 it was introduced, and then fully adopted by 1936. It's the predecessor of the mighty German MG42, which was basically the same weapon, but they changed all the parts and made it stamped, so it's easy to produce in the factories. And the main differences between them is the 42 is a little bit more reliable, a little bit lighter, and um, has a massively higher rate of fire than what the MG34 can give. Just think of this as the MG42's slightly older, less attractive sister. Got it? This thing is going to be firing around 900 rounds per minute, which is not slow by any means, but the 42s can fire up to 1500. And we're firing the 792 Mauser rounds. That's a full power German rifle cartridge, which uh, 45 damage, I think, is selling this thing a little bit short. We might have to adjust that a little bit later on, but it's a weapon from Call of Duty, One Warfare 2019. So, you know, by 2019, this is a pretty old machine gun, and if they're still finding use for them <laughs> during that year of the warfare conflict or whatever, then what's that say about German engineering? It's pretty darn good. So, it's got custom animations and custom sounds like you'd expect any COD ported weapon to have, and a lot of customization. Let's get into it. First of all, We've got the receivers starting at 45 damage. This powerful auto receiver will give us a boost in fire at a cost of range. That's weird. But it'll give us 51 damage. It's not a whole lot. There's also options for hardened piercing auto receivers, which will increase your range in comparison. This is all balanced, very weird. There's also hardened, which will literally do nothing for you. Hardened is actually less powerful than the automatic, so it may be worth going over the numbers here. Just to check them. There's also an option for a rapid receiver here, which will decrease your damage even further, but it'll offset that DPS loss by increasing the rate of fire. The only thing you're going to be doing is uh, using more ammunition to get the job done. So powerful auto receiver, I think, will be fine for this one. But again, like 792 big Mauser rounds doing that much damage? Hmm, okay. Next, we've got the legendary effect provided by legendary modification. We'll skip over that. And you can throw a lower rail bipod on using on the ground it gives more stability i've got a mod which you can go prone but it'll mess up all where all the weapons um magazines and extraneous attachments are i'll see if that works but it probably won't it'll probably look really stupid but i'll try to see if that could actually work okay if you do go prone the mg34 will look like this um so yeah it's uh, a little bit misshapen but at least the bipod's on the ground right 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 there Next, you've got the stocks, and you can throw on some modern tactical stocks onto this. You can barely see them, but they're there. Um, pick what you want. We'll go for the one that requires gun nut rank 4, because, you know, that's got to be the best run right for. Recoil reduction and such. A little bit of uh, extra comfort in your shooting. Anyways, so we've got the barrels now. It's all air-cooled barrel system. Uh, the MG34, known for being the first made, uh, made uh, general-purpose machine gun for... That kind of role. The German doctrine fairly, uh, um, I sh I'd say, pretty advanced for that time, especially compared to the French, who are going out against full armored German tank columns on horseback, stupid idiots. But, you know, they lost and they paid the price for their insolence. Now, we've got these ones, um, different barrels. Don't matter about the length of these things because for some reason, like, they're all the same range stats, so pick which one you want. If you want a giant, great, big muzzle break on the end of it, then throw on that barrel. And we've gone straight over to lasers, which will be attached over this side. So that's a green laser beam. Is this one... No, that's green as well. That one's red. Let's go for the 5 milliwatt laser, because that's better. It's 5 times better than the 1 milliwatt, right? Next, we've got muzzles. You can throw a gigantic suppressor on this, like this one. Or perhaps this one, if you feel like it. I don't think these suppressors would last particularly long, but we're playing Fallout 4. It's a fantasy game where suppressors are made out of the same stuff they make Captain America's shield of. So, pretty much invincible. There's also options for other muzzle brakes and compensators if you want to help with the recoil control. But it's a COD-ported weapon, so generally they're pretty tame in terms of recoil. Let's go for a super stealthy MG4234. <laughs> Sorry, I look at it and I think 42. And uh, that that will give us a little bit extra damage thanks to Ace Operator. Anyway, 64 damage getting a little bit better. The range is going to suffer from that greatly though. So perhaps we're using the subsonic rounds to offset the amount of gas going through the barrel and the suppressor just to keep that thing 
online. Next up, you can throw some grip tape on the barrel. I mean, the grip, not the barrel. Don't hold the barrel there. It's an air-cooled system, so you might burn your fingers on that if you hold that for too long, which is no good. Next, we've got perks. This is kind of interesting. So it brings up some of these COD perks, which will give you a little bit of uh, option of... Uh, giving you extra abilities. A couple of these would be useful for survival, like this heavyweight perk gives you a little bit of a carry weight bonus. So if you're playing this thing in survival, you want to offset the weight of this weapon, you can do that using that perk. Blast shield is interesting because you can use, use it to tank everything, which is good. Ready up, regenerates your action points faster. Very, very strong. Faster a a HP regeneration with ICU. Marathon increases your action points, allows you to extend your VAT streaks out. A little bit further. Time of aiming down sights halved. Generally in Fallout 4, like none of the... That doesn't really matter because your aim down sights pretty fast no matter what weapon you use. So not as useful. This one fortifies rad resist. That's kind of cool, but very situationally useful. Slate of hand is a very good thing, especially if you've got a small magazine. This thing can go up to about 100 in the magazine. So potentially, yes, less useful, but the reload animation is long. So a good choice. Steady aim will give you a, hit, a better hit by accuracy, particularly if you've got a laser sight on that. That's a good synergy that you might be thinking of using. This gives you the Vats Enhanced Legendary Effect on Perceptive. That is very, very strong. That's a very strong thing. Resilience, full damage negated. You can just wear Acrobat's pieces of armor to, to negate full damage if you've got those. And this one increases movement speed whilst aiming down sights. That's Stalker. So this is actually a particularly tough choice. We're going to go Slate of Hand for this one because, you know, we want to slam the magazines in as fast as possible. But there's plenty of uh, hard choices you got to make because some of these perks are really quite good, which I quite like. Next, you've got a damage slider here. What we might do is push this up a little bit to an extra 50% damage. I think 90 for the 792 Mauser rounds is a little bit better. But if that's not good enough for us, we can increase this thing's damage even more. This is a frangible thing. You get... Extra blade damage, like a little bit of extra damage. Armor piercing will increase your damage and give you a little bit of AP on your rounds. Incendiary will give you almost double damage. Oh, wait, wait. Well, yeah, kind of almost double damage. Half of that will be energy damage, but that's pretty strong. Cryo is kind of cool. I suppose that'll give you the freezing legendary effect because that's what it says right there. Also, it says explosive on the incendiary things. That's interesting. Hollow point is just a straight damage upgrade gives you the lucky prefix interesting 173 that might be pushing it i think so maybe we'll just turn this down to 25 yeah 158 damage i feel like is going to be good enough now i think there's also an option for a magazine that i mentioned earlier so standard round belt thing 50 rounds you go up to 75 and at, and at last you've got 100 round magazine you can put in there also changes the model of that magazine on the side there so now it looks a little bit more um matching the rest of the weapon's color and you can also throw on some cat tactical powerful reflex sights the holographics no options for scopes though so long range machine gunning not an option we'll go for an aerotech here because you know this is a, a western germany weapon so we'll throw on some of these western more western um attachments but yeah that's it i think there's a lot of customization, and I'm actually pretty happy with it. I think balance-wise, where I've got it now, I'm comfortable with. But, you know, we've got a lot of boosts to that at the moment. I'm noticing here that there's a extra Picatinny Ray, which we're not using. So, perhaps, originally, there was meant to be, like, a foregrip or some sort of aiming apparatus or just handle there, but not here. So, maybe there's room to grow there. Maybe that's just there on the COD version without any options for foregrips or the like. But there we go. There's our MG34, our lucky version. We'll show you how to make these, and then we'll shoot stuff. In order to get this weapon, find weapon MG34. In that subfolder, you're able to craft not only the weapon itself for these materials, but the 792 Mauser rounds, which are proprietary ammo provided by this mod. For 8 lead, you get 10 rounds. So it's not as generous as we've seen other bullets, but it's still a pretty good amount of bang for your buck, considering it's only 8 lead. You get like 50 or so walking into that gym at um, General Atomics Gallery. And we are back at Immersive Gunners Plaza. Here is our MG34 in first person, and if we uh, 
go up to the tail fin of this car, we can pretend that we're mounting the bipod on. There we go, that's a proper machine gunning position, taking cover behind something super explosive. Also, just ignore the, um, the character's hair color and eye color. That's just a coincidence, don't, don't worry about it. So that's what it looks like in third person. It looks like I'm holding it at a slight angle. That might just be because the magazine is a little bit side heavy. It's throwing off the balance of the uh, machine gun. So whether that's a thing that's intentional or not, I think that's kind of cute. Anyways, there's the uh, reload animation in third person. Very nice indeed. And here's a couple others that I made. This one's got a shorter barrel and it's built for that. It's got that uh, reflex sight as you can tell as well. This one here is different. I think this one was supposed to have the incendiary rounds, right? Right? Yes, it's got the explosive prefix, so technically it should be utilizing incendiary rounds, but nope, they're normal. Okay, we're still getting the energy damage that is listed, so that's fine. There's the reload animation there. This one is different. This is the hip fire machine. I've got the steady hands perk with a shorter-ish barrel and a laser sight, so the hip fire accuracy should be sublime. Very nice. And lastly, I've got this one. I forgot what I did with this one. I think it's got... Uh... Tankiness? I don't know. I don't think it'll make too much of a difference because... We're going to have a good time with this thing. I can feel it. Anyways, let's begin. And we'll start off by zooming into these guys, which is... That's actually pretty far for a holographic site. We get a nice sight picture of what's ahead of us. And I believe this thing will have reliable hip fire. anyway, so... Yeah, that should be good. Oh! Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Just hop up here again. Okay, we're in danger now. Well, a little less uh, cheap talk and uh, sneak criticals and a little bit more straight combat. I feel like that's this thing's role. Although, can you give me a moment just to reload? Thank you. Very kind of you. Because you stand out in the middle of nowhere. Some of these gunners, like... Maybe I'm just culling all of the experienced ones so they send all the rookies out. Like, they're... They're like cold kernels, but they've got zero experience, so let us run out and charge at the person with the 100 rounds in their machine gun. So, so far, so good. I think where I've got it at the moment with that extra 25% damage boost, the suppressor, and the hollow point rounds, I feel like that's a fair approach to this. The thing about um, using weapon mods that... Oh! Okay, so it will set them on fire. There's just no incendiary effect with the bullets. There's no projectile override, but it's definitely there. Okay, that's good to know. Anyways, let's uh, go over to slow motion bats as we finish off this reload. Add a critical for this guy. Cop that. A couple of uh, decent kills in that thing, but it was never going to be totally efficient in vats. Probably in vats it'll be okay. I've got one is going to be particularly good for that, but let's just keep moving on. Got to actually watch our round count. This is the uh, hip fire one, so we've got to go full Rambo style with this thing. Just, uh, hang on, give me a moment. I'll be with you in a second. Quick smoke break. Right, we good? Good. Smoke goes over. Let's get back into it. If you are wondering what the uh, iron sights look like, just uh, I'll get back to you on that. Give me two weeks. There's the reload done, and that's what the iron sights are. Very controllable machine gun, considering we're firing full-powered Mauser rounds in the, at a rate of fire like this. But again, it's a COD-ported weapon, so, you know, that's just... Uh, we're going off the uh, COD characteristics, then that is totally acceptable and fair, at least to what the other guns in COD are like. What are you doing back there? <laughs> he fell down, right? Yeah, he did. I saw him take just a little smidgen of health by damage as he goes there. But uh, we're going to be careful here because I might run out of rounds soon. I might have to console command myself um, some rounds. And that might be the limiting factor on this because, you know, what, 10 rounds for 8 lead? Unless you've got multiple settlements hooked up and a hell of a lot of time sunk into this game together, said lead. You might find that you're a little bit, um... Whoops. Oh, okay, we might be able to just bludgeon our enemies to death with this thing because, well, from what I saw there, we might have a pretty strong bash damage component. Hell yeah. Who needs bullets? You can just use this as a melee weapon, I suppose. Anyways, uh, we'll uh, open this and we'll do a good old-fashioned Call of Duty breach. 
Yes. With a twist. Mm. See, keep an eye on the damage numbers. Mm. 1700 headshot. 1700. So, I suppose that's good in a pinch if you're in close quarters and you need to reload. You can just beat the rest of them to death with the machine gun without having to sit through the reload at all. Especially with slow motion. That was a 3400. That guy's got an invisible head. I hit it anyway. <laughs> I think every fourth shot is going to be instant critical, so arguably, um, if you're in close quarters and you've got a bunch of gunners around you, what you could do is just smack the first three and then you've got instant criticals with the rest of your shots. And maybe, just maybe, as you're killing the gunners on that, you'll get a little bit of a, a little bit of a bonus from um, uh, the Grim Reaper sprint perk, and that'll allow you to you know, keep that AP flowing and more shots to actually get when you actually get into shooting. But there we go. That's it at Immersive Gunners Plaza. And, yeah, we did pretty well there. You could argue that I probably tilted it a little bit too far, but any less damage than I was getting there, I probably would have been complaining about it. So, I'm, again, I think I'm happy of where I've got it, but perhaps just tweaking that little bit of uh, base damage just to be 25% higher, or maybe perhaps even 30% higher, I think, Will make this thing feel a lot more balanced but at least it's not going to be completely overpowered just uh don't worry about the bash damage that's normal okay so now is the time where we go into bullet conservation mode because i've got just under 600 rounds in this thing before we're completely dry so we'll start off by well letting that ghoul do his thing actually we get a little bit of gun food bonus on this thing there we go add some criticals to the mix not a terrible start i gotta say Oh, so if you keep firing even after... Oh, I've completed a challenge. Oh, yeah, I installed a, I installed a mod that gives you the cute little challenges. Oh, we just stealth MG42, did He didn't even see us. Okay, I was saying before, I installed the Fallout 4 New Vegas challenge mod, and I think you saw a little trophy go off, uh, but... It's a shame that it doesn't make that same noise that the uh, Fallout New Vegas little challenges did, which I think was a great system. That was so good. And I kind of wish they would keep that. They sort of did it in Fallout 76, but that was to get atoms, which, you know, you do X amount of things to receive, like, 10 cents worth of atoms. Well, what a waste. It'd be way better if we got some sort of XP out of it, you know? Okay, this time we're going to use the Super Vats version. I'm going to get a couple of shots in. I wonder if it's a kill that causes the criticals. No, that's definitely a critical there. We've got a few criticals in. Oh, the Mysterious Stranger has shown up. And I think... Old mate's targeting me now, which that's fine because I've got a trick up my sleeve. It involves hitting you in the ass multiple times over. Eat this stagger. Oh my goodness. Okay. No, it's getting serious. I need nerd rage. Nerd rage, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Played it a little bit too uh, aggressively there, but Nerd Rage, a pretty clutch activation there, combined with um, Destroy of Acadia, I think, saved me. Oh, a little bit of extra XP from something. I think that was an idiot savant proc that actually got that. I see a short video getting around saying you should never upgrade to idiot savant rank 3 because like the 3 times multiplier isn't as good for like giant killing sprees and I disagree with that if you've got a good enough if you can proc a idiot savant trigger like at the start of a firefight you've got a weapon that can dish out multiple huge bits of damage like an instigating gauss rifle on snake criticals and gun fu you can rake in thousands of xp really easily but also yeah this weapon works with classic holstered weapons there it goes if you have the bipod it'll clip clip straight into your ass though so be warned your immersion might be ruined by that okay i realize i haven't used vats at all during this video so let's start now we'll try to get close enough so we can actually target this dude in vats where is he come on he's right there there it is all right hopefully we're receiving a 10 round burst for this thing but we'll target his face which is there and begin no it's a three round burst i was not expecting that well at least we get some of those shots in and he's all cooked and everything okay we'd have to use the suppressed version here we've only got 
200 rounds left. So we'll use all of our slow motion vats criticals and maybe go into a little bit of slow motion vats ourselves. 101 rounds. I might be bashing this guy to death like that. He blocked me! You... Okay. Well, he's got at least some sort of defense against this thing's outrageous block damage. No, none of that, mate. I had to look out for um, the amount of uh, damage this thing does. <laughs> I gotta reload one bullet. That might be the uh, finisher there. But now it's a proper melee battle. Cop that. And we'll get right close. Actually, you gotta go for the legs. Treat them like adats, go for the legs, and you'll be pretty much laughing. We can bash just slightly faster, and we can even use the mysterious stranger to cover our retreat. He got one shot, but that's fine because our AP bar is regenerating. And let me just uh, roll off here for a second. We've got enough AP to take him on. As I try to... I, I rolled into him. I was actually meant to hit alt, but I hit Z instead. So <laughs> that's what happened. All right, one more hit. Actually, can I do this? Okay, I'm all over the place. I hit the Windows key for some reason, but <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I just sort of zoned out for a second. All right, well, that's it. And look at that laser size pointing exactly where the middle of the crosshair is, and that's not where the rifle, uh, the rifle, the machine gun is pointing. And have a stim pack, take a load off. We are done here. So that there was the MG34, and it's pretty good. A solid weapon. I've also noticed, well, I did notice this this morning whilst downloading the 34, but there's even more mods there. There's an ASVL, there's a Striker, I think, a Striker 12 port there's going to be, and I think there's another uh, Scar in there, so I think rather than having all of those mods separate, you can just have them all as this one, like all, like a four in one instead of having them all separate, but obviously if you want to allow players or modders to download exactly one of the guns but having a four in one in one asp is efficient and also adds a lot of cool guns into the game so hopefully that gets done but maybe we'll come back to this and we'll see if the asvel or the scar or the striker have the same quality worth downloading check it out link in the description thank you very much for watching